This community is called Trulo Jinx. This is the first BTR community that we developed. Jinx outperformed every metric from an underwriting standpoint. Our, our rents were 20% higher than what we projected, and we've seen really strong renewal rates as well. So you probably had some unexpected curveballs to deal with as well, I would imagine. Probably our biggest challenge as a business at that point was dealing with Ultimately, we get a great result yeah, on time on budget. In today's show, we're going to do a deep dive into a build to rent community case study. So I have Ryan Watts back from Red River Development. I'm glad to have you in here. Good morning. Thanks, Chris. Glad to be here. So to set the very high level of this, this is one of your early communities you've done where you have come full cycle in building, renting out, starting distributions, uh, which I think is always the best to talk about. When I look at uh, investing in deals and meeting people. I like to see, hey, what have you done? And also who's the jockey out there, you know, building the community. And I want to hear about this community you have in Oklahoma. Sure. Yeah. No, look forward to talking with you about it. Um, this community is called Trulo Jinx. This is the first BTR community that we developed. So we've done five today, but uh, Jinx was the first one. And uh, again, this that's under our Trulo Homes brand. So all of our communities are branded uh, Trulo communities. But uh, yeah, we're really proud of that property. Uh, it's It was the first one we did, obviously, uh, a lot of lessons learned, but um, overall has been, um, you know, a really great result. Right. All right. So rewind us back to like, you know, day zero. Mm -hmm. uh, you're out talking to your first community. How would you find the land and just take us back to that time frame? Yeah, sure. Um, so we formed the business. Um, we, we knew we wanted to invest and build a rent. We were looking for our first site. And um, I, I, I grew up, uh, as did my partner, Stephen, and my partner, Jay, in Tulsa. And, and in fact, my, my brother, Stephen, still lives in Tulsa. We have an office in, in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're based in, Dal based in Dallas, but, but we, we, we have our property management team and a lot of our development construction folks in, uh, in Tulsa. And um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of relationships in that market, certainly, um, when it comes to to, to brokers and site selection and, and um, you know, we found a, a great site in, in a top suburban community called Jenks, um, which, which really is probably the best uh, suburban community in Tulsa. Um, we, we found a site that looked very promising and it was, it was through a local broker uh, who had, who had flagged it for us. And um, um, you know, we, we ended up putting an offer in. Now there was a lot of, um, it was, we ended, ultimately ended up piecing together three different tracts of land and we had to rezone it. Um, so there was quite a bit of work that went into actually getting it approved to, to build on, which is not uncommon for BTR because um, a lot of cities and municipalities, because it's a newer product type, they don't have an off the shelf zoning. You can't, you don't just go to the city hall and say, hey, I want, I want to zone this, you know, built to rent. They, what they type of zoning that. is it then? Or so it sounds like it's not just your typical bread and butter zoning. Yeah, in most cases, it's what would be called a PUD, which is uh, um, a planned unit development. Usually, it it is oftentimes multifamily zoning, and and a, but it can sometimes be residential zoning. It varies okay. by municipality, um, and then and then you're usually getting some sort of a specific use approved. And then when did you close on the first uh, parcel? Like what yeah. what what year? Or yeah, that was in late 2020. Uh, we closed on it, and then um, we broke ground in uh, uh, kind of early 2021. Okay, yeah, kind of late late Q1, Q2, 2021. And you, did you have all three parcels like close at the same time, or? Yeah, we did. We bought the we 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 bought the land first. We had an equity partner in tow, and and this they had been a really good partner for us, um, uh, a strong institutional partner. And so we so we knew we, we kind of had them there ready to go, but we needed to get the project to a point where it was kind of shovel ready, uh, meaning, you know, we owned it. The zoning was approved, and you know we had a contract with a general contractor to build the project, and 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 that was you know very specific, and and in this case it was a guaranteed max price contract um, that really defined, hey, this is exactly what the project is going to cost. So, okay, so bought the land and took you what sounds like a year or so to get all the rezoning and all the details. Yeah, figured out? I, I would say we were doing some of that while the land was under contract, so that that process in total took maybe six months, you know, and involved part of it was an education campaign. This particular piece of land was zoned industrial. Um, and there was another, there's an industrial use just to the east of it um, that existed. And, and the community, the, the residential community that, that uh, was adjacent, you know, we, we were making the case to those folks that, hey, look, you would rather see a built rent community 
on this land than than you would another industrial building. That's gonna you know it's gonna give a nice buffer between the industrial that's already there and your community. You'd much rather see a residential use versus an industrial use. Yeah. And so that was ultimately I think those residents recognized that and and that helped certainly as we went to the city to get the get the uh, zoning approved. Okay. So get it approved and then you start uh, digging out the dirt. So this was. Uh, what quarter in 2021? Uh, Q2 2021. Yeah. Okay, Q2 So this was what one year after COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's when supply chains were going just super wonky. Labor was going super wonky. So you probably had some unexpected curveballs to deal with as well, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great point. Um, honestly, that was probably our biggest challenge as a business at that point um, was dealing with um, supply chain issues and construction costs because things were changing so rapidly. They were, you know, it was increase. Everything was increasing so rapidly. It was like, okay, where, where are we going to lock this in? We had a lot of, you know, long conversations with our partner about, hey, what, what happens? What about lumber prices? What if lumber spikes? How much exposure do we have in all, in all of these different cost categories? And that was something we had to manage really closely. Um, ultimately, on time, on budget, everything. Uh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's one of the few time. people I've heard say on time and on budget during that phrase. You yeah. Have, yeah. I, I always remember like, you know, photos of all these communities and no one has garage doors or, you know, there's uh, something missing, but you guys were able to uh, get it all done. We were, we were. Yeah, yeah, that that worked out really well um, in spite of a, a lot of wrangling kind of on the way in and thinking about, you know, what, what, what are our risks. But ultimately, our, our general contractor in this case performed great for us and uh, we, we got a great result yeah, on time on budget. That's great. Yeah. So what was the total like project cost between land and construction cost? Yeah, th $30 million was the total project cost. That was a smaller community for us, 138 homes. More typically today, we're, we're doing typically around 200, but okay. um, that was just as much as that site could accommodate. Uh, so yeah. And then uh, broke around in, I think you said Q2 21. Mm -hmm. And then when did you have your first resident move in? First resident moved in um, a little more than a year later, let's say uh, 13 or 14 months later. And that's that's really when we delivered the first phase of that community. So for that for us, that was the um, the clubhouse. Uh, we have we have one uh, model unit there. So so model unit, which which is obviously fully furnished uh, to, to tour. And and then I believe we had about uh, 13 or 14 homes uh, and that that came along with that first phase. And are these uh, duplexes? Are these detached single family homes? Paint me a picture for what the community looked like. Sure. Yeah. With our Trulo communities, uh, we are really trying to give our resident the best of both worlds between a suburban rental home and a uh, class A uh, new built apartment community. And so we've got uh, great amenities, uh, large clubhouse, resort style pool. Uh, we've got a, a large, very well equipped fitness center. Uh, we've got, you know, green space, dog parks, a playground in, in the case of Trulo Jinx. So that's kind of the, the basic amenity set. It is it is a gated community. We've got, you know, on, on site maintenance, on site leasing. Um, and then, you know, all of the homes in this community are all single story and they're unattached. So uh, we have one, two and three bedroom homes and um, each home has its own private backyard, uh, 10 foot ceilings. You know, brand new finishes, really class A finishes. So lives like a home. So you get the you know the benefits of a of an apartment community, but you get something that really that uh, lives like a home. And I think that's that's um, what we're trying to deliver to our residents. What was like the rough unit mix? You said you had one, two, three bedrooms. Uh -huh. Was it a third, 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 or? Yeah, it was actually. That was it was an even split in that community. A uh, third, a third, a third. So, okay. Yeah. And then uh, I know we talked about this in the past podcast, but I want to dive in more details. So you get to even start and deliver. Um, what were you projecting in terms of like rents and where they come in at? Yeah, so our uh, chunk rents initially were around in in, a, in our market study. You know, we we, we did our underwriting. We we uh, looked at all of the communities in the area, um, and, and and it's it's a little bit difficult because. Uh, there were no BTR communities in the area, right? I mean, we were the first ones to deliver in this market. And so you're kind of triangulating uh, on a market study between um, class A suburban garden style uh, uh, apartment communities and um, suburban rental homes and, and and trying to kind of guess at that. So you kind of so, blend the two of those together? That's right. That's right. And so ultimately, it was actually John Burns Consulting that, that did the market study. They recommended uh, rents of about $1.70 a foot, which on a chunk rent basis, our, our units are around 1,000 a foot on average square feet. So about 1700 a month. Okay. Um, was was where they uh, recommended we set those rents and that's that's how what well we underwrote um and you know as as it 
played out and as we delivered, we, we found that um, we, we did quite a bit better than that. Uh, so it's always a pleasant surprise when rents come in higher. Yeah. Um, and then when did you get the, the, uh, the project fully stabilized, all built, all rented and stabilized? Yeah. Yeah. So we stabilized that project. As I, as I mentioned, um, we, we broke ground kind of Q2 of 2021. It was, you know, call it Q, Q2, end of Q2, uh, 22, or maybe, maybe early Q3 when we stabilized. And so then that, that, that put us right there around the end of uh, uh, 22 when, when we became fully stabilized. Okay. And then I want to, uh, if you don't mind, kind of talk about the, the debt on there too. Like what, I assume you had the construction debt and some takeout mm -hmm. financing, but a lot of people got, you know, uh, they got pinched with the interest rate increase. Mm -hmm. um, how did, what type of debt did you get and how did you guys navigate the unprecedented changes in the interest rate? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so, yeah, certainly a lot of movement with interest rates. Um, and, and that's uh, been something we've seen, you know, really the last two years as, as it's, you know, they, they came screaming up uh, from their lows and, and have, have here, you know, kind of stabilized uh, and, and flat as of uh, the, the last, you know, six months or so. But um, yeah, that, that was something that, uh, that really, and I, I mentioned this before, but the Jenks outperformed every metric uh, from an underwriting standpoint outside of interest rates. So our interest expense certainly higher, but even still, you know, uh, we made up for a lot of that because our, our rents were twenty percent higher uh, ultimately uh, than, than what we projected, and we've seen really strong uh, renewal rates as well in terms of our ability to push rents on renewal. Um, and so that's that's helped helped quite a bit. So, yeah, we, we recently refinanced out of the construction debt um, and put fixed rate debt on, on onto that project. We went with LifeCo, which get which gives us great flexibility and, and allows us to start making distributions for our investors. And then uh, the capital stack was this one of your institutional investors or a mix of uh -huh. institutional investors it was, who yes. were funding this? That's right. That's okay, right. so uh, they're funding it. And then what is the exit strategy like? Because you're you're getting distributions now, and are they gonna? Is it going to be a long-term hold or are you guys going to sell out of it or when am I going to buy it? Yeah, I, I think for now, the plan is to let's just make distributions and uh, we, we can generate um, high single digit, low double digit cash on cash yields there. And um, and then I think we'll position that to sell at some point. You know, we want to be opportunistic. We're not we're not under any pressure to sell. Um, right. It's conservative. cash flowing like that. You can cash hold it. flowing, conservative capital structure. We're growing NOI. Um, you know, so there's 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 nothing forcing us to sell. But but I think ultimately to realize that return, we probably will sell when we feel like the, the time is right. Yeah. So yeah. probably another year or so for markets. Yeah, I would, I, would, I would guess we're looking at another, you know, two, 18 months, to two years. But okay. uh, uh, certainly could be longer. So first project, very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you learn from that in terms of like uh, either, you know, down to like design elements in the unit mm -hmm. or it's like building as you start doing your next projects? Yeah, I think we learned a lot. I mean, just just executing a lease up, understanding how the property was going to perform, you know, understanding how unit mix plays in, you know, what lease is fastest, what unit type lease is fastest, you know, how how are we marketing, uh, you know, marketing during a lease up, you know, where where do we want to, you know, what things from a construction standpoint do we want to do better in, on the next project? So there's, there's, I mean, there's a lot of lessons learned. And, and ultimately, I think a lot of validation in the underlying business model uh, uh, from seeing the successful results uh, with Jinx. Wonderful. Well, Ryan, this is great. Thank you so much for coming in and giving us a uh, sneak peek into uh, the Jinx development. I know you have some future deals in the pipeline. And for those, we'll be hosting some webinars to do some uh, deep dives into those. So investors out there, if you have interest in future projects, let us know. And as some of this pipeline comes up, we'll get you in the loop. But before I let you go, give us a sneak preview of what is in your pipeline. Yeah, so today we have two uh, shovel ready sites. Uh, we have one in Waco, Texas. We have another one in Centerville, Ohio. Uh, we're very excited about both those projects. We think they both uh, check all the boxes that we've seen with our other communities in terms of being really strong secondary markets that we, we would be able to deliver a unique product type with our Trulo community. And so we're excited about those projects and looking forward to, uh, to bringing them to residents in those communities. Fantastic. Ryan, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you, Chris.